This episode of MMA Nuts is brought to you by JP Cycles, the best aftermarket parts and accessories for your motorcycle. Save up to 30% off with code MMAN. Factor 75, get fresh meals delivered to your door. Use code MMA Nuts for $40 off your first two weeks. Liquid Web, save 34% off for three months with code MMAN34 off. Vitamin World, get 10% off with code MMA0810. The Fence Soap, the ultimate soap for wrestlers, Jiu Jitsu, and MMA athletes with the new peppermint oil bars and shower gel. Use code MMA Nuts for 15% off. Hey fans, it's MMA Nuts, episode 394. 394. My name is Ingo Weigel. Back with the MMA Show. My fans, for my fans, walking line between serious. Oh, you fake me out. you out that time. And okay. ridiculous. Horrible. But fake myself out. <laughs> Maybe I missed. <laughs> okay. He's too amped up. He's pumped. Are you pumped? Fuck yeah! It's going to be a good show. <laughs> Here you go. Do you have any Shiza for the Kaiser? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> but let me talk to you about an interesting fact I learned in class. I'm in grad school for psychology, and there is actually a device which some men get uh, later in life when they have problems with their erections, and they insert these rods into the penis, and you pump that shit up. Have you heard about this? Mm -hmm. I've heard about this like <laughs> 30 years ago. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, apparently the technology has out. not been improved. <laughs> and, and <laughs> it's they, they still do this. So when you say pump up, that's what I picture. Like a dude pump. Like a fucking Reebok pump. Remember <laughs> yeah. when those shits came out, No, man? they take your testicles out. The right side pumps it up. The left side deflates it. They put like a, a two of the... Yeah, they remove your testicles. Yeah, shit is this? It's like an on and off thing. Fucked up. But apparently, you know, if you want to have a little intercourse and you can't get it up anymore, even with the drugs. The, so the drugs don't work. You got to go to fucking Was it the, the verb? The, the verb. They sang that song. Drugs don't work. Remember that song? No. Okay. It's a very sad song. But I'm I'm confused because if, if that shit doesn't work and you're using drugs, I want out. There's, why are you living then? No, the pump will work. Guaranteed to work. But, the, I'm but saying. there's one small problem. So that it pumps. You know, this part is all pumped up, but the head is very sad. That's what, <laughs> like you have this like firm just fucking just penis kill me with that. a very I sad head. No part of this. That's what I said. If my no dick part. don't work anymore, I'm done. No. Game over. Put a fork in me. This is a great way to start show. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Thankfully, both of our dicks are working dicks. just fine. So let's talk about something. UFC Thank 227. You. All right. Which happened last week. We we're yeah. off a week. We're back. Thank you for coming back again. We're back with a vengeance. That's right. So what do you think the pay-per-view buy rate was when you had two rematches in weight classes people aren't very fucking excited for? 185. Surprisingly higher. 265. Surprisingly higher. What? 500? No, not that high. But 300,000 is wow. the initial report. And sounds high, doesn't it, for like the little yeah. guys? Yeah, yeah, no. And I don't know who's pulling that. If you have uh, TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt as the main event, and you have Mighty Miles versus Henry Cejudo as a co, but it's also rematches for both guys. And yeah. briefly, let's talk with the Mighty Miles and Cejudo. <sighs> Cejudo got the win. We went right along. Thank you. <laughs> like, you're going to ask me questions. No, I was just fucking, hey, good kidding. for him. And the only thing I wanted to say is, man, maybe I wonder if Mighty Mouse is kicking himself for not taking that super fight now because now that shit is up in smoke. Who the fuck wants to see the guy who lost at 125, who's no longer a champion, to fight the 135 pound champion? Nobody. Right? Nobody. That, so that may have cost him, it's I don't know, a million bucks. One guy <laughs> that wants to see that. Because now Cejudo's talking shit, saying he would either go up or he's willing to, he wants the super fight mm -hmm. right off the bat. I'm like, Let see, him have it. that's what, if you're, if you're a true fighter, I'm not going to say if you're a man, if you're a true fighter, you're willing to go up a class or down a class and fight anybody. Fuck I got to break a record, I got to do this, I got to do that. Who cares, right? He wants the money, he wants to get paid. Yeah. Price fighter. Exactly. Pay the man his money. And then you had TJ Gillisaw and Cody Arbrandt. And fucking same result, right? Yeah. That's all we got to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just say that Dillashaw said he did the homework on scouting. And I think Garbrandt came into his fight way too emotional. Again, won't do the glove touch. And he's just bombing right hands. And they said whenever he throws the right hand, he drops the left. So he's just waiting, waiting, counter, counter, counter. It was the same fucking three times. He did the same thing. Yep. Smart man, that TJ Dillashaw. Yeah. What's next for him? Exactly. I don't know. These weight classes, it's it's confusing. I think there's a lot of talk of Dominic Cruz 
I wouldn't mind seeing Coming that. back. Yeah. It's challenging. I think DJ can go up or down. I, th I think he's the kind of fighter who can do whatever he wants within two or three weight divisions of, you know, like, yeah. he can probably go in three weight classes. I don't know that he would, but, you know, I think every, it seems like everybody gets a belt and then they want to fight in a different weight class. What's up with that? Except for Mighty Mouse. Well, Everyone else that's smart will do that. Yes. But well, Mighty Mouse has been at that weight forever, so. Right. Now, is he going to move up? I don't know. He, may, he might retire now, for all I know. Still got the Xbox sponsorship? Yeah. Good. Good for him. He's got some kind of... This is Twitch. I don't know if it's yeah. on. Yeah. Making money doing that. And then Cody Garbrandt had something to say that theorized in the past about immediate rematches. He said the UFC wants him to be the champ, so that's why they gave him the re immediate rematch. Mm -hmm. So hold that thought. And then Stipe Miocic tweeted this one out. And he just says, hmm, weird. And this is a quote on, from Daniel Cormier talking about Demetrius Johnson. It says, if Demetrius Johnson doesn't get a rematch, there's no hope for any of us in the entire world because that means that nothing you could ever do will warrant getting an immediate title shot, quotes, rematch. I don't so know if I buy that. This, what, what, is that. What does he mean by that? Why, because he was champ so long? Yeah. But I don't think he was exciting, and obviously not a pay-per-view draw. So the UFC, they're going to give him the Jose Aldo treatment. Have a nice life, thanks. Right. Thanks for making us all this not money. <laughs> and <laughs> exactly. Be gone. So I, I mean, I think we saw him. Was it in Chicago? Did we see Who? Him? Did we see him? Yeah, we saw him yeah, fight yeah. in Chicago. It's kind of exciting live, but on the pay-per-view card. It, it just on TV, I, it doesn't I don't know. translate. It's no. the cage. The cage is the biggest problem. Like yeah. you have that small cage, out and I say it a million times. WEC, how many oh, yeah. boring fight? It's because that tiny cage. Smaller. You have the little guys in the tiny cage, and it's exciting then. But you have a huge cage. I think everybody in the huge cage. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Maybe he goes to Bellator. Who? <laughs> Pointy mouth? I don't know. They're getting rid of all the lighter weight classes. Smart move. That cock, cock that Scott Coker. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, well, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. So Scott, where do you want to go next? Let's get out of this UFC 247. You. you were going to talk about Bellator. Didn't you have something oh, about Bellator? Oh, yeah. Well, Bellator, um, I was. That's why I brought up Coker. So Eddie Alvarez yeah. choosing to shop the market at this moment. And I think the UFC has a clause in the contract where they get a, a set amount. I think it's of, a 90-day window. Yeah, where they can kind of do their own thing, where they can negotiate um, without interference from anyone else. And Coker kind of said, well, if Eddie Alvarez is interested and he's not under any contractual obligations, we are very much interested in talking to him. So I kind of like that. I think it would be smart for him to take that, in my opinion. Wait, wait out the 90 days, say no to the UFC a bunch of times, and then go over to Bellator and be like, hey, Sign me up. Well, it depends it. how they're treating him. When he first came in, I think they had to match the Bellator contract. And when they published what he was making, it was like crazy money mm -hmm. and signing bonuses and vehicles and checks. I don't even know what checks. else he got. Well, wasn't it Bjorn Rebney still running the show back yeah, then? And there so, was a yeah. lot of bullshit relating to him. Yeah. But Coker's a much, much nicer guy. So, I mean, I think he can make it work. I mean, uh, well, that's, that's the thing. It doesn't seem like the UFC cares if they lose people at this point. If you're no. going to let Roy McDonald and Gegard Mousasi go, mm -hmm. it's pretty much, with I'd say with exception to who they're going to keep, it's Conor McGregor, Diaz Brothers, Cyborg. And it's like they don't even care if the people are fighting. They just care as long as they're not fighting for a competitor. Mm -hmm. you know, we'll just tie them up. Fucking you know, Diaz Brothers sit out for years. Cyborg, they don't make a fight for a year. Years. <laughs> years. <laughs> yes. Conor McGregor, he makes them a shit ton of money, but he doesn't fight in fucking MMA He's gonna for fight a year. Soon, a couple right. months. So we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, I think it would be a smart move. Yeah. Go back, right? I think so. And, it was, it was, and you think about how deep 155 is, I don't think the UFC is even going to try to keep him. No. I really don't. Makes no sense. No. They have like 700 guys on their contract now. <laughs> yes, Keeps it multiplying every week. It does. And we'll just stick with Bellator. They just released the... We were talking about the bracket for the welterweight tournament. So mm -hmm. they finally released it. So and they, they actually did it the way I was hoping for, where they kept striker preliminary on the one side and grapple fuckers on the other side. So 
You have Douglas Lima versus, I can't see, uh, Morshkov. Uh -huh. If I pronounce that right, you have Paul Daly versus MVP. Fitch and Roy Gracie oh. versus Ruth and Roy McDonald versus, versus Fitch. John Fitch. And then there's an, alter, an alternate fight of Lorenz Larkin and a Russian dude. So, based on this layout, who do you think we're going to see in the finals? I like Rory McDonald and Paul Daly. Hmm. That's interesting. You know, when I look at that MVP versus Paul Daly fight, I actually think Paul Daly's going to go for takedowns. You think? <laughs> when you, when it's crazy because the shit that MVP does, yeah. and, and then this will be a good match with Stry Stryker versus Stryker. I don't want to see any fucking bullshit takedowns, but this is a fight to see where does he stand. Yeah, I agree. The, the, the matchup, I think, will be interesting because I think... Um, but uh, Lima and this guy... Are tough as fuck too. They so are very tough. When when you get to that semifinal match, it's anybody's game. And if any of those guys decide to take whoever that guy is down, they're fucked. Yeah. Because Paul Daly on his back. Is this, <laughs> Good is this luck. Touch screen. No. <laughs> that, was, that was weird how that just happened. No. <laughs> like what the hell just well, happened? It just shot up. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, uh, like that first fight, like uh, I do like McDonald going all the way, and I think that's the best matchup is you put McDonald against John Fitch, mm -hmm. so you can say, John, we put you in the fucking tournament. I know you yeah. got knocked out, but hey, that sh these things happen. They in happen. MMA, man. In MMA, they do. <laughs> they happen, even in Bellator. Yeah. Mm. Okay. We're talking about Bellator. Can we segue away from Bellator? Sure. Let's talk a quick second about Shogun. If you don't okay. Mind. So, uh, you know, as you know, he didn't fare so well in his last fight. Uh, went back home. Had some time to think. Yep. I think his family, uh, some concern over his career. Why? Well, you know, been knocked out a few times. <laughs> Not looking so but fast. But he's a champ, double champ, or something yeah. like that. Not in that. But he said he's going to fight out his contract. He's got three fights left. He wants to fight before the end of the year, quick, yeah. as quick as possible, get back in there. And it sounds like he might be leaning towards retirement at that point. Not now, which we think, at least I think, might be in his best interest is maybe, you know, the call it quits or to only take like classic fight something exciting don't try to go for belt i don't see him winning the belt but um no and i think that last fight we were hoping he was going to win because then yeah. cormier said he would have uh, gone back to 205 to fight the shogun and yeah obviously it's not going to work out well for shogun but he at least no. would have got paid yes, and maybe could have said hey i made enough money in this fight that i'm going to check out but i'll tell you what even if he fights these three fights out, I don't think he's done. I think he's still gonna go go over somewhere else. Yeah, my, that's my. It's funny you brought that up about the money. I think I think for him, it's it's just like a lot of these aging fighters. They need the money. You know, they they need yeah, to keep, chuck, look at Chuck Liddell, yeah. right? Yeah. So I have a feeling uh, we're gonna see him fight for quite a while, and it, it kind of breaks my heart because it, you know, I I like him, and I just don't see him faring well against these young guys. No, and <clears throat> and that could prove the argument out for the senior league mm. you know if we're gonna continue fighting and and speaking of senior league i just saw there was a post of tito ortiz was training with alistair over him Ooh. a little wrestling action Ooh. but why not make the senior league all I'm these guys don't want to fight no and if they're gonna fight Fight older guys. <laughs> don't have yeah. a, don't UFC this shit and get thrown to the lions. Do it the belt. Yeah, like yeah. To quit building a name. Like Damian yeah, yeah. Maya is gonna get so fucked here of late. You know. I like to see him in Bellator. Yeah, awesome. Because they they know how to treat the aging guy. They make they make the right matchups. The UFC yeah. does. They're just f selling you out. Yeah, that man wants a belt out. though. He wants that UFC belt. I, I don't know that he's gonna ever get it. He might as well collect some money along the. Mm -hmm. you know, Damien and have a have a chance to be successful over there. Mm -hmm. More successful. I mean, he's been he's like uh, what do you want to say? Forever many years in the top ten. Yeah. Like, um, has he ever even drift? I don't think he's even drifted out of the top ten. No. And I don't know how many people can say that for as long as they've been in the UFC to be in the top ten for yes. X amount of years. He's probably. One of the guys that's mm -hmm. been there in the longest, and you think maybe GSP and other former champions, mm -hmm. Anderson Silva, John Jones. Well, John gets taken out because oh, he's fucking ineligible to fight. He's in and he's out. Right. And then he's in again and out again. It's only a matter of time. 
Yeah, you want to talk about him? John Jones, please. All right. So, 2018, I know I have to skip around. He has not been drug tested for the entire year 2018. No use out of drug testing. But he's I, in the pool. He's in the pool. Of course. And I thought he was drug tested doing a breaststroke, in case you later are watching at home. Oh, the breath. Hey, easy. <laughs> oh, sorry. Those things are delicate. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> well, true. So, John Jones, not drug tested. 2017, I think he was drug tested 11 times. Wow. Okay. We'll start happened? with a hard ass and go to 11. What happened here? I don't know. And remember that picture I showed you a few weeks ago with him in a Walmart and how sloppy and flabby he looked like? This is what he looks like now. Oh, damn. And I'll just tell you this. Jawline, traps, neck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looking quite uh, um, beefy there, Matt. I think he's going to heavyweight. Has all the signs of steroids. Allegedly. Allegedly. And going to heavyweight. <laughs> yeah, that too. Hey, Daniel Cormier, you think you're going to fucking move up the heavyweight? I'm coming to get you. I think uh, you. he's going to go the... the um, Frank Mir out when Brock was champ. Remember how he was like, I got to bulk up. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger is better. I am coming for you. It's just like literally got coming huge. For you. That was crazy. Who else is looking huge lately? Husamar Paul Harris. There's a picture of him floating around. <laughs> if you, <laughs> that just, I look at this. I just, I can't oh. stop laughing. <laughs> he's gigantic, so man. I don't know if he's gonna fuck me. Or serve me like the, the best Italian pasta <laughs> primavera from yes. fucking Deluciano's that I've ever had. A little mustache, a little, little cut in his hair. I don't know. He said he's a real legend serial. Apparently, rabbit. his friend is a stylist and they did it for a joke, you know, but I don't know. It looks it's very of, threatening. It looks interesting, but it looks scary at the same time. But just the arms, dude. His arms are like as big as my legs. <laughs> it's so the crazy. The forearm is what's most frightening. That's bigger than a Popeye <laughs> forearm, for fuck's sake. It's so, not right. He's going to be ripping people's legs oh off. Oh, my God. That's so crazy. You tap. I don't feel it. I don't feel nothing. Oh, my yeah. God. So, anyways, yeah. I gotta scroll what back. What else you got? I got a lot. I'm very itchy. Why? Wow, you're wearing a hat. What's up? The, the lights, the lights. I know, they, they're very bright and aggressive. Yes, they are. So they announced Nate Diaz versus Dustin Poirier. I like it. For uh, UFC 230 at Madison Square Garden. They never did this before? For some reason, I thought they fought. I know, they didn't. I looked it up. They never fought before, which is weird. You would have thought. Because Poirier, I think, was floating around at Featherweight for a while. Ah. And then he moved up to 55. Okay. I think okay. he was doing that back and forth for a little bit. Okay, gotcha. So finally he's back, and then there was like some weirdness of Nate saying, uh, I'm not going to fight because at the same press conference, they also announced Conor McGregor versus Habib Nurmagomedev mm -hmm. for UFC, what, 229 on October 6th, and the rest of that card looks like shit. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, well, it's McGregor, crazy, right? McGregor's supposed to get like um, some kind of like ownership money uh, on that card or something. Yeah, they said, Data said he's not going to get that ownership <clears throat> cut or the piece of the UFC, but they're paying him so ridiculous. Maybe that's why no one else is on the card. They can't afford to do <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <seriously. laughs> Like, what do you think he's going to pull if it, that boxing match, would he net $100 million? Yeah, I think I think he, he tops $20 million probably. Because wow. GSP at one point a few years back said he made like over 10 right, if I recall correctly. But I think sponsorship money was huge for him. Uh, because okay. he had, like, all the Gatorade, I think he had Nike, like, all the marquee brands, GSP brought. Okay. So I don't know. I, that uh -huh. would not surprise. I was going to say 10, but 20 I think he's gonna may 20. not be out of the realm of reality, right? Because no. you got to say, any pay-per-view buy rate is going to be over a million, guaranteed. Should be. Guaranteed. For McGregor, easy. And will that be the biggest one? It'll, no, ever? For, no, yeah, him and... Norm have. No, would that be the biggest one? I don't think so. I, I think I think there's not enough other fight unless they change up the card. But it'll be interesting to see how much pull McGregor actually has because if he's the only marquee fight, what if they do a million and a half in paper? Well, think guys? about the Russian contingent for Norm Good point. Though. Oh, good point. Oh, you're talking global pay-per-view buys. Yeah. Oh, I never thought of that. 
interesting. Because you have, you have, the, the thing that you have is you have two countries, you have warring countries right now. You have Ireland and Russia, and they're... It's like Rocky IV, man. This is awesome. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. So it's like, holy shit. Uh, oh, they may, question. I don't, hmm. if, I almost want to say two million, but it, it really... That would be insane. I feel like both guys on their own is 1.25. If you stack the card... Now we're getting. We can edge it up. We we might be able to hit two. Two million. We might. Yeah. You're one two five right now. Okay. Remains to be seen. So then I'm gonna go to the phone. This one's gonna take. He's calling while. in. I got a. I got a phone a friend. You got a phone a friend. Yeah. All right. Should I talk about something else while we're talking? Uh, it's up to you. I mean, I can get this pretty quick. Get but it done. I will say so. Nurman Gomedov's had an interesting week. So apparently there was a video of him giving homeless people money to do push-ups. And him and his cousin are laughing about it. And then there's like some bullshit going on. <laughs> so I'll show you said video. Well, they're doing push-ups for money. Yeah. And... This got a lot of national attention. Forbes wrote an article about this. Why? Like how disrespectful it was, and this is disgusting because they're is this in the US fucking or? mocking people. I'm assuming it's in the U.S. But they're like, oh my God, they're mocking the homeless. They are kind. They are kind of mocking the homeless. They're also giving them money. I, I'm torn. Well, I'll tell you what. I am totally okay with this. This is yeah. where I stand on this. Um, huh? Let's just talk about the homeless. <clears throat> We've had a homeless person here in my home city, and they're mentally disturbed. They're mentally challenged. A lot of them are. And <clears throat> I saw the police fuck, fuck this guy up. Some shit was going down. I'm at the Dairy Queen, local Dairy Queen, getting some ice cream with my family. Mm -hmm. And I see like six squad cars come up, and I see the homeless guy walking down. I'm like, oh shit, some, <laughs> something's going down. And I'm debating to get my cell phone camera out. I'm like, fuck it, I'm just going to watch. And then they, they, they gently grabbed him, took him down. There were like eight guys. They had fucking the bulletproof shields. and One homeless guy needed all this? You don't know what he's packing. And you don't want to... You got to get him down before you can check him out. So, yeah. um, so uh, contrast that to, is it okay to give them money? Um, I don't have a problem with giving them money. And I think they're... My looking at the video is their form is dog shit. Do you see that push up form as dog shit? It's not good. I laugh at that. And if I'm giving them money at the same time, I'm totally okay with that. Mm. Okay. You're, because <clears throat> here's how I'm looking at it you're doing a service. If your form is shit, I'm going to laugh at you and I'm going to tell you your form is shit. Okay. And that's why I'm laughing at you. Is that why they were laughing? I don't know why they were laughing. Okay. I don't give a fuck. I'm not upset. I'm not a pussy like all these guys online about it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not upset about it. I just question whether it's uh, I mean, I can humane. see. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear what it, It's kind of like one of those gray areas. I don't know what the context. You know, you never know anymore with the shit you see online. There's no context half the time. So I don't know what they're actually making fun of or laughing about. Here's my problem. It's called fucking common sense. If you're going to do that and take the video, why the fuck are you posting that shit? I don't know. That's where I say don't post that. Yeah. That's the problem I have. Yeah, Be yeah. smarter about what you're posting. Mm -hmm. Good point. Move right along. I gotta get out of that. I don't I don't like this. <laughs> like this is what this guy did and how yeah, do we yeah. feel about that? Who gives a fuck? It was twenty years ago nobody knows about this. Did you see T J Dillashaw and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson doing their uh little ad for Van Heusen. I did not. Uh, They're showing off this MMA Flex collection. It's very reminiscent of the Chuck Norris action jeans. Uh -huh. I'll show you a picture. So basically it's this. It's super flexible shit. Uh -huh. And there, there's a whole video that you can check out online of them like fighting each other. And Oh cool. 
some tight ass pants. But is this I, seriously? I, who <laughs> wears this skinny I bullshit? Conor McGregor wears that stuff. I know. But is this something we need in the workforce these days? Or no. we, do you need to be I, throwing fucking roundhouse kicks and spinning back? I, kicks? I, I'm all for like flexible clothing. I do like that. But I, I don't know about the skin tight thing. I, I've seen sometimes I go in the city and I see like these these uh, businessy types. Yeah. And I feel like the, the suits are getting more form fitting every every year. Yeah. It's, I'm like, dude, how is this fucking comfortable? You're, I, you're, I, I hear you. I, I, you're hanging out all day in this outfit. It, this is like yoga pants. Like, I, I don't understand. Your balls don't get like sweaty you. or something. I mean, what's going on here? Well, I just bought a new suit. I don't know when it was. Maybe six, eight months ago. Yeah. And I didn't realize like how tight the pants were. I was like so concerned about the jacket and the fit and getting it tailored and everything. And I'm like. Holy fucker! I'm like I like I always have to wear the baggy jeans because my thighs are thick as shit, and I'm like, man, if I fucking walk wrong, I am ripping the shit out of the uh, legs on this. Yeah, the pants are tight. Yeah, everything is, is more slim. It's supposed to be slim fit. So yeah, I can't do this. It's great when you're standing up and walking around. And you try to sit down or anything. Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> splitting some seams. <laughs> yes. Let's do. Do you got any other news before uh, this? The things I have are quite negative. I'm going to skip them. Okay. <laughs> so I want to do a follow-up on the Contender Series. So it just wrapped up this season again. Okay. I'll just say the best thing on fucking TV as far as combat sports. I'll, I'm almost would rather watch that than a regular UFC event. And I'll oh, wow. tell you why. Quick. You're looking at two hours, maybe 7 to 9 o'clock. Yep. The pacing and the action. So... 83% finish rate Ooh, of the fights. There was exciting. 33 out of 40 fights were finished. And I'm going to ask you, what do you think the cause of the high finish rate is? Is it because of the smaller cage? Or the hungry fighter is trying to get the UFC contract? I think it's the, it's got to be the smaller cage. Because I, I don't believe that a, a prize fighter on a pay-per-view is less hungry than a guy coming in. You know what Are I mean? Are you serious? You don't think so? I think 100% the hungrier guy so? is more wanting to prove something. Because this is this is what you've been working for your whole life, right? Yeah. And it's not about money. It's not about... Hmm. It, it, it's like what Damian Maia was talking about. Like, why is he sticking to UFC? Because he wants to be a fucking champion. There's a, there's a reason why people want to get into the sport. And it's like... Their goal is to get into the UFC, and I think sometimes once these guys get there, they fucking coast. And especially when they're a champion, you see some of these guys, mm -hmm. Tyron Woodley. He seems like he's coasting a little bit. Uh, who's the other guy? Big Mac guy. Big Mac. Big Mac. No, like the the Big Macs all the time. Oh, Johnny Hendricks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Those are Baconators from Wendy's. Big difference. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> fucking fat burgers. That's all I know. Sounds delicious. Yeah. But again, right, right? He gets to be the champion. He's fucking seventy percent guy. Yeah. And how do you learn it from GSP? GSP fucked him all up. <laughs> <laughs> he gave him brain damage, I think, for those jabs. It's like Josh Koscheck. Um Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wink, wink. Exactly. It's horrible. <laughs> We're going now. <laughs> so did we answer that question? I, I think it's a combination of both, yeah. actually. And why doesn't? That's the unfortunate thing. Is like, why doesn't the UFC? implement the small cage all the time i'd be we curious know the finish rate is higher it's proven out what if the finish rate goes up in the cage i mean i, I don't know I, I think the hunger is a big factor but i really think that's less space makes makes a huge i impact. could agree i, I will huge. agree with that and say it maybe it's 60 40. okay small but cage 60 percent 40 percent hunger okay fair Bro. i concur man okay so <laughs> follow me on this little okay a little path. Leaving so, breadcrumbs? Yes. Okay. So I know there's all these celebrities that want to fight in MMA, right? Uh-huh. And who was it? 50 Cent was talking some shit, and there's a bunch of other guys. And Snoop Dogg is training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all these guys. Like, okay, cool. And they said that they're gonna continue doing tough and they're gonna do the contender series. And I think it's moving to ESPN Plus, but okay. that's a, another topic. But the UFC, you know how they just built that big performance institute and their yes. whole facility. They bought the facility next to them that's like, like 140,000 square feet. They're Whoa. building a new tough gym and contender series gym in the new place that they okay. just bought. So I'm thinking, you have celebrities, they want to do MMA. Why can't we do 
I don't know if it's a tough for celebrities. Ooh. But if you have everything in this new thing, uh, let's just give them some good coaches, give them the Oops. nutrition, give them the facility, and then at the end you have all the fucking celebrities fight. They want an MMA fight, do it. It doesn't have to be in this huge thing. I like the little warehouse feel of it. But if you want to do a big fight, that's fine. But you could totally film all that shit. I agree. I want to see them training. I want to see them go. It's like, what is that show that Paige Van Zandt was on? Uh, Dancing, Dancing with, with the Stars. stars yeah. Don't they show all the background of them they dancing do. and all that bullshit? We're like The Biggest Loser. That's a big show. Same kind of thing. Okay. You know, same kind of concept. Right, right. Watching the people work out and all that stuff. Like Celebrity Deathmatch. Perfect. That was the claymation yes, was. on MTV. But let's do that. Yeah. I, they have the facility, they have the technology, make that shit happen. But people could issue challenges. So then you don't have to see the CM Punk in the fucking UFC on the main card. Put them in the bullshit celebrity MMA or celebrity UFC, and then they fight off on like a smaller card, small cage. I don't even find if they have to wear headgear or something. Whatever. Yeah. Let, let them wear a little protection, you know, like an amateur kind of would. I think they have to wear shin guards too as an amateur. That's right? fine. Fine, but I like your concept. It's really cool. Let's I, do this. They're gonna do it. Pride rules. Though. Somebody's pride, pride rules and no drag dancing because the fucking you know all the celebrities are gacked on some stuff, uh -huh. personal and professional. Oh yes. He takes that. <sighs> that was a healthy drink. It was good. I'm gonna follow suit. I'm gonna move right along. What else you got? That's what I'm looking for. I got a lot of news. It's been two weeks. Two weeks. We covered a lot of ground already. Jesus Christ, Paul Harris is so like blowing up my computer screen. Literally it incredible. Even fit on your screen, it's so big. All right, so they said former NFL player. He's an All-Pro apparently. Mm -hmm. Sean Merriman is going to make his uh, combat sports debut Sean in Man. fucking bare knuckle boxing. I think he was a linebacker or something. Wasn't he? I don't know. See, sounds familiar. I think you're right. But his debut is going to be in a bare knuckle boxing match. Good for him. Yeah, that, that's where I want to make my professional debut is in a fucking bare knuckle match. Holy shit. And it says he's fighting on the, here we go, listen to this name of an organization. World Bare Knuckle Fighting Federation. World Bare Knuckle Fighting Federation. Five words, okay. And he's on the same card with Chris Levin and Phil Baroni. Oh, nice. Yeah. They don't have a date set, but his rumors of October 20th. You all right over there? You're like, I'm itchy. Something bit me, Bob. Just uh, like that. Right now? Like one of those <laughs> creepy crawlies? Oh, no. Something bit me in the leg. I put my foot down. I'm like, fuck. Uh-oh. I'm okay. That could be down. the hip. Uh, I don't have one. <laughs> but okay. I will stab you. He's going to stab you. <laughs> Whatever you need, Ingo. Uh, I will do it for you. Super itchy. Um, probably a spider, I bet. But is that what you want to make your debut in? Uh, well. CM Punk? Unless you're seeing Puck, I think that would have been a better route for him. Maybe it's exciting to him. It, it reminds me of the early days of UFC. So it's kind of like has it this is. rawness feel to it, you know? What if this is the beginning of something great? It is. And speaking of August 25th, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, second show. And guess where it's happening? Mississippi. First one was in Wyoming. Mississippi now legalized it. Chicago's next. It might be. So if here's, that happens, I'm, we have to go. Fuck yeah, <laughs> I'm going to sit ringside. Bear knockoff. Chicago, Come on, Indiana, the or game. Wisconsin, or even if you're in the tri-state area, Michigan. We'd go. It's yes. If it's all around the Great Lakes, we're good. We're in good grace. We're we're in contacts. Good. So Beck Rawlings, Chris Lytle, Joey Beltran, and uh, Charles Bennett <laughs> fighting oh, on there. Okay. Yeah. There's nine fights. Wow. And again, this is another one. Good pacing, and people are getting fucked up. That's what Matt likes to do. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to see blood and guts. I do want to see blood. Rip his blood. throat out! <laughs> Fuck him in the throat all! <laughs> like, break his fucking arm! Break it! What are you waiting for? I forgot one fight. I swear to God. That's when I'm up, off my chair yelling at the goddamn TV. Because I want, I want action. I want shit to break. Break his arm. Oh, that Sick was... Fuck. I think, was that GSP and uh, Dan Hardy? Was, is that the one you're talking about? I don't know. I think so, because remember he, he couldn't, GSP wouldn't break Hardy's arm, and he could have, and you were just... That might have been. I, I do that a lot. When shit's <laughs> going crazy, I'll get up and start yelling. Yeah. What else we got? So, uh, 23 and me 
I saw Joe Rogan, he just posted his Neanderthal. He did. And I, I like to pronounce it with a T. And I hate how he pronounces it because he always goes Neanderthal. Neanderthal. I like to say Thal. So he posted his results. It said his score was 280, which was more than 57% of 23andMe customers. So he's at 280. So I looked at mine and just did, for comparison. I'm at 292. Yeah, I think mine might quite and I'm, too. I'm more than 75% of the 23 of me. My brother is 311. Oh really? How'd you find <laughs> so this? If you go to the 23 of me website, you can check your Neanderthal report. So I wanted to see like, what the fuck does that mean? What does it mean? And they break it down. It says like some of your traits may in be influenced by having Neanderthal variants. So it's like straight hair, less likely to sneeze after eating chocolate. I don't know why the fuck that's a thing. That's an odd one. Less uh, back hair, that's me, and then height, and that's me. Yeah, so that's I, weird. I have some, but not a ton. It's just like a little. But I'm, I'm also wondering, like, is the higher that you go on that, like, the more aggressive and more prone you are to uh, liking fighting and combat type sports? You think so? I don't know. I'm just wondering if that's one of the things. Checking mine right now. See if I can get one again. Carry on. Thinking. No, I'm, I'm I'm pondering that in my head. Oh, you are. And I also checked my background again. It's German and UK are the biggest things. Okay. Yeah, I was from like the Baltic Sea. Um, Baltic Sea or something. I don't know. I don't have mine right hand here at this moment, but to check. I think mine was quite high too. I don't know about 300. That's pretty high. <laughs> That's my. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it means. Checkers out. Maybe everyone should just post there if you got it. What's your score and what does that mean? Are you super aggressive? Are you super aggressive? <laughs> Not anymore. I mean, are you, are you aggro? super? No, I'm more mellow. But you can keep pulling it up. I'll pull up some other shit while okay, you're I'm searching. So Pat Barry and Rose Amajunas had some shit to say about Joanna and Jacek. So Pat was saying, Joanna is fucking herself over by not accepting those losses to Rose. Okay. And Rose is out there basically calling Joanna dumb. So what do you make of this now? Where Rose is starting to talk shit. Where she was the one who was always telling us uh, she wants to be this great martial artist and bring respect back to the game. But now here's her and her um, girl, well, my girlfriend, boyfriend slash fighter Very. like into talking shit game it's weird um you know it could be trying to sell pay-per-views it could be I, I don't you know I know that they both are not exactly uh, mental stability is questionable sometimes <laughs> So I thought she had that. Remember, didn't she have that sixth sense of like she knew when some shit was gonna go down, so yes. she would get out. But she was on that bus when the dolly hit, so something like that. And but she was shook. She was shook. Maybe she has spider sense. We're thinking about that. Hmm. So, what did you find out? I am at 289 on the Neanderthal variant. This is more than 71 percent of 23. So you are a serial rapist. Great. Yes. And I'm three higher than you. So yes, does that mean for me? You're an extra serial rapist. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Oh. I feel like you're putting words in my mouth. My iPad is just sucking up energy. It's go. I, <laughs> I just like, saw it. It's it just like, like <laughs> it was at forty percent when we, like five minutes ago. Now it's at five. You, would you like a charger? No, I'm good. I don't need it anyway. Okay. I don't know what's happening, but it's weed in the juice. <laughs> Seriously, are we done with the Pat Barry and Rose? We're good. Okay. UFC 228 poster. I'm ready. Ooh. Um, a lot of people are freaking out because you got Woodley versus Till, and Till is towering over Woodley. Why? I don't know. A lot of people are freaking out about that. I wanted to check the height, so let's see. Woodley is five nine, and Till is six foot. So All right. is he? Three inches taller? About, yeah. No, he looks about seven or eight inches. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does he look like a giant? That's. Three is my hand. Three is this. Hmm. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. That's eh, a little bit dramatic. 
This, I think that you were saying this is the first time someone's ever skied over another fighter. Because if you look at all the other fighters, like look on the wall, everyone's eye to eye, regardless of how tall they are. Maybe the UFC's trying to tell us something. They're racist. Exactly. No. <laughs> no. They don't want fucking Woodley, Woodley as champion, no, and I get that. And it's not a racist thing. It's not a racist thing. You got more phone stuff? <laughs> I have so much video. Whoa. It's been a long week. It has been. There you go. So what else is going on? <laughs> uh, nothing. My iPad's draining juice. I'm I trying to figure that. out What's why that that's happening. Didn't you just get a new one recently? iPad? Yeah. No, I've had this a while. Some some software must be running. I guarantee you there's an update that's fucking stuck or something. Or are you like infesting my iPad with some, some disease? Well, no, oh, you've been serving too much gay porn. No. Hey, did you know that men can fly? I saw this video the other day. Oh, hang on. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that guy flew like 10 feet! <laughs> that guy's not playing a game. Oh, I didn't see the rest of the video. Who are these people? I don't know. I think he's an Uber driver. That's what it looks like to me. Really? He ripped this shit up too. What the oh, fuck? Yeah, it's good. That little man got his ass beat. Well, he got launched. Like he got fucking launched. That's crazy. I think that's more disrespectful than getting KO'd. Someone just picks you up and just throws you like twenty feet across. <laughs> just <laughs> like, wow. a little, like, 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 like a, a child, yeah. like an infant. Like what are you, one year old? Yeah. <sighs> I could probably throw a one year old really far. <laughs> wow. Really you far. You did not just say that. I'm just saying. Hypothetically, if you were one years old, you go okay, ten months. Ten months. How far can I throw you? I don't know. That's 40 yards. Okay. Easy. Okay. Easy. Alright. And if I kick you, 28. Alright, here's, here's here's another one. video. I want to know the backstory. I don't know the backstory on this, but... Oh, dude, I saw this too. Yeah, this is... That... You know what? Oh, Jesus There's Christ. a longer version of that. Yeah, it was hard to find because it got pulled down from the, sort, the original source, but... I'll, I'll tell you what, this motherfucker never took no Krav Maga because how do you get up? Not like this. You kick that bitch in the knee. Yeah. Oh, wow. She's quite juggy. She was juggy oh, and fair. super strong and very, and a lot very of people, aggro. I think, I think people were saying the Cleveland Browns were trying to sign her up <laughs> for fucking the offensive line. Oh, uh, yeah, man. We're not going to go on. Wait. We're not going to go undefeated. Wait, they lost, but what's the opposite of undefeated? We're not going to lose every defeated? game. Defeated? Yes. We're not going defeated. This entire We're not going winless. Yes. Winless. Oh. And I think that UFC is doing a Where Are They Now for UFC 1. Uh -huh. They got all the guys that were on the original show back together. Well, not all the of them. The tough show, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and the crazy thing is, like, I look at this picture, I can almost name everybody in the picture, but there's a couple guys that I don't know their name. So it starts with Josh Koshak, uh, Sam Holger, Mike Swick, Swick uh, Griffin. Forrest Griffin, Randy Couture, Loden Sinclair, uh, Chuck Liddell, uh, Stephen Bonner, Nate Quarry, uh, okay. some Russian dude, Alex... Fucking can't remember Sam Holger. Yeah, no, not no, him. That's, not him. That's, that's that black dude. I don't forget that guy's name. Chris Lieben, uh, Jason Thacker, Diego Sanchez, Kenny Florian, and I forgot that dude's name. Nice. But say ninety percent of them. But then they got them all back together for another picture, See and I think they're doing it now. But how many more guys are more jacked now than they were before? A bunch of them. Chris Lieben sticks way That's out. Huge. Nate Quarry. Kenny Florian's like 100 pounds heavier than he was. <laughs> or wait, no, he was fighting at 185 on yes, the show. He so he's actually Super probably shady. the same way. Yeah. And I'm just kind of crazy because uh, who's still fighting? Diego Sanchez and Chris Lieben's coming back for his uh, thing. Yeah, and not Liddell. Liddell might yeah. fight again. Which is crazy. Yeah. And Swick's Jack, but you can't see in the picture. Yep. So I think everyone's on TRT at this point. Gotta be. Yeah. Life is good. Yeah. But that should be cool to see because I want to. I love the Where Are They Now? Is they do those little segments on uh, UFC Fight Pass. I do like that as well. 
so crazy. It's so many years ago. They're so young. Chuck looks so old. His ears have grown out more. <laughs> they grow. Like, what the, the hell's going on? Don't stop growing, man. It keeps it's just bigger. like your dick, right? It gets big. It keeps growing. It keeps growing. It gets larger and larger. What else? Did you see Colby Covington was at the White House with the belt? No. Oh. Yeah. Oh, see nice. that? Good for him. He's wearing Appar the Yeah, so apparently Trump is now the interim heavyweight champ and did they just become best friends? Apparently so. Yep. Right. And he's wearing a Make America Great Again hat. And unfortunately, they're going to strip that belt right from uh, Covington as soon as Till and uh, Woodley fight. Oh, good. He got a picture with the president. He did. And that's, that was like his goal in life, right? Mm -hmm. Get a picture, get paid. So I'm just going to skip along. We're going to go right to astronauts. Okay. Moving. Moving. Astronauts, take a drink. Oh, are we doing Tweet of the Week? Mm -hmm. Nice. Man, something really fucking bit me. I'm dying. <laughs> Here, I'm going to punch you in the arm. You'll totally forget about that. <laughs> well, you're not. No, I won't. No. All right, we'll start with Heron Gracie. He says, I'm having a party in my mouth. I'm only inviting acai and granola. That's how they like to say it. I, I would say acai. Yeah. Acai. We'll start with there. Robert Frank. When you're jacked and juicy, the hoes get loosey. Okay. Matt Chrisman, jamming six straws in my dick hole and jacking off like a minigun. <laughs> That's pretty I don't, good. I don't know what that I means. like that. And then this one's a three-parter, so you gotta follow me. So Robbie Fox, he's a, he works at Barstool Sports. He's a huge Conor McGregor fan. He's been giving Khabib Nurmagomedov all sorts of fucking shit along the way, so. He says, so I've just been alerted that Team Khabib is not only aware of who I am, but that he's none too pleased with what I've said about him, his father, and his camp over the past few weeks. Allegedly, he's legitimately, here we go, legitimately very angry about it all. Follow up tweet. Uh, I don't understand how some people can't separate jokes from truthful, serious statements, but here we are. So, to get real for a second, because I definitely don't want to piss off the wrong people, I'm going to apologize. Third tweet. To absolutely nobody, <laughs> fuck you, Team Khabib. Fuck your father, your camp, and anybody that rides with you. On October 6th, you face your day of reckoning. Your greatest nightmare becomes a reality. You'll be put to sleep in one. See you in Vegas, you bitch. Wow. That's pretty ballsy. That's a lot of shit. <laughs> he got a lot of likes and eight on that on the same one. <laughs> and he looks like he's eighty five pounds and like yeah. skinny as fuck. He, he ain't beating anybody's ass. I like this. a lot of respect I like for that this. kid. Ballsy. I like it. So which one you got? I gotta go with that last one. I'm with you. I gotta go with it. He's got some balls of steel. Yeah. It's funny as fuck. It is. And he he was in oh god. What the hell sign was he holding up while ESPN? I think Ariel Hawani is trying to interview uh, Connor's lawyers after he got up, and he's got like a free Connor sign, and the camera keeps panning to try to put him on the shot, and he kept putting his free <laughs> Connor sign in. And he had a megaphone, and he was yelling all sorts of shit, and the police came over and like, listen, you talk on that megaphone or the megaphone one more time, we're gonna fucking arrest you. And then 10 minutes later, he brought it back out and got out of there. They fucking wrote him a citation. So good on that guy. Yeah. Making it happen. That's Don't let the police hold you down, my man. I, well, how, what can they give us? I respect. They can't arrest him. I, I forgot what they fucking, some trumped up charge on using the megaphone. Disorderly conduct or something yeah. weird. Yeah, some bullshit. But trumped up charges. Good on him. Moving along. My, my laptop keeps acting up. So it's just kind of... Something's kinda, happening. Maybe your internet... <laughs> no. Maybe you're My internet infected. was down yesterday, so for a couple hours. If you could fight one movie character, who would it be? Me? Yeah. Ooh. One movie character? Yep. Uh, I'm going to have to go with... Uh, what's his face? Um, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis? No. You're out of your fucking mind? Not Daniel Day-Lewis. In... Uh, what? That was scary movie. The gangs in New York. Oh, that's a crazy one. You gonna fight that guy? Am I gonna lose? Or stab or am I gonna you? win? It's up to you. You're yeah, right. It's, your it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna have to go with uh, Keanu Reeves in, in the the recent. Uh, son of a bitch. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't. Yes, you do. He's the point <laughs> break. No, no, not point break. He was a cop. In Bill the, and Ted's. 
No, the recent movie where he was the where he was the the contract killer and they killed his dog. Yeah. What, the, what the hell is this? Did he made two movies? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the name of the movie. I'm gonna let you fight this <laughs> one. He knows what they are. The Matrix? No, not the. Actually, that'd be cool. But no, uh, the Matrix. Fuck. What the hell is that? Man, I can't think. J W. J W. Jack White. John. John Wick. John Wick. That's okay. it. Thank you. I'd fight him because it'd be cool. Because he knows jujitsu. That'd be a cool fight. He knows team. a lot of shit. It'd be a cool fight scene. It would. We could kill each Watch. other with pencils. It'd be a double murder at the end. It'd be like the greatest fight scene in the history. It would be a forty-five minute chase fight scene. That would. That's the whole movie. And I'll walk by at the end and pick up your glasses, put them on, and walk away. That's right. Yeah, so shed, shed a little tear. I will. Just one. <laughs> exactly. I won't whack off. No. <laughs> until I get home. Okay. <laughs> nice. I may fuck your dead corpse. Why? <laughs> Jesus, okay. Just in case. I gotta make sure I've got wow. all bases covered. This is getting crazy. So, you know what I'm gonna fight? Oh. The fucking uh, Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, nice. That cunt used to haunt me as a child. I was so scared of her, but I had these, I had these crazy nightmares with her where I used to wake up she was blowing you? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. It was super crazy. Those like, teeth? We got crazy. I was like fucking six. <laughs> okay. But I loved it. Okay. It something about a witch's nose, <laughs> oh, like God. working it into your belly. Uh-huh. No, but I would wake up and I couldn't move. And her fucking head would be posted on the top of my doorway. Wow. And she'd be talking all sorts of smack to me as a kid. Wow. And you imagine you wake up and you see the fucking head of the witch up there talking shit and you can't move. Just she's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. I just fucked you up. You can't move. <laughs> and then she's talking shit for like another ten minutes. I can't do a goddamn thing. Sleep paralysis. I bet you had that. Yeah, maybe at that time, yeah. but it wasn't like a one-time thing. And now I have to. I could only. The only thing I could do was yell, and I fucking wake my mom up, and she'd come in. Oh, I'm like I can't fucking move, and I'm awake, and that fucking bitch is up there terrors. fucking talking to me. That's a thing. Night terrors. Yeah, that's a thing. You probably had that. It was bad. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I, I fucked that bitch up with her. I would do it Daniel Cormier style. That red ruby sliver. I know what to get you for your birthday now. What? I'm gonna get you like a, a hired wicked witch of the West that you can beat the shit out of. Don't tempt me. <laughs> I'm like grinding my teeth right now because I'm fucking it's ready to just right. kill that thing. I'll fuck that bitch up. Nice. Bitch, witch. Ooh, I'll whatever. make it even more interesting. I'll make her hot underneath so like you smack her a couple times and then she, the wig falls off and then she's really hot and then you can fuck her. <laughs> you mm. like that idea? So How like, thick is she? I'm talking like cyborg thick. Mm. What if, oh, what if it's the cyborg? <laughs> it's the ultimate birthday mm. gift. The cyborg dressed up as the wicked witch. No, because I want to get like it's gonna get too violent. That's the problem. She can defend like, herself. No, it's gonna get hurt. Okay. If if she's wicked witch, mm -hmm. she has no chance. No can defend. Bingo. Okay. No can defend. That's right. I don't care who you are. It's like a Ronda Rousey armbar. Yes. That's right. Okay. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, Stephen Pollins, would you rather see a brutal knockout or an all-out war that goes to decision? I like the war. Way more entertaining. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I agree. And uh, I think about Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor. Yeah. I watch him fight a hundred thousand times. Uh -huh. And you know what? I actually think that's the next fight. Win or lose for McGregor and win or lose for Diaz, I almost guarantee that's the next fight that happens. The question is what? Weight class? I don't know. 170. 65 for the belt. 65? New weight class. Well, GSP is talking about that one. 65 for the belt, Connor. If Connor wins, 65 for the belt. Do you think Sage Northcutt will ever win a title? No. What the fuck's going on over here? I never get fucking texts. Sorry, it is. And how much potential does he actually have? Sage Northcutt uh, for a title? I, I think he's going to fade into obscurity here. I think he's just a pretty boy who likes to post pictures of himself with these shredded abs. Yes, he makes a better fitness model than an MMA fighter. Yeah, and that's kind of like the Paige Van Zandt mm -hmm. style of yeah, yeah. MMA. If you could create any fight in any city in the world, where would you watch it ringside and what, where would it be? Such as McGregor versus Khabib in Dublin. 
Mm, I like that one, uh, but I like it in Russia too. What, what, what would I do? I would do. Wow, that's a great question. I like. I, I was just, we were just talking. I was like McGregor versus Diaz, but I want it in fucking Hawaii in some sort of an outdoor in a stadium. I want fucking fire dancers, like people spinning fire uh -huh. and hula chicks and a big ass luau like and that. fucking pigs and poi and poi tastes like shit, but I. I Smear it on my nipples. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case. Mm, smear point on your nipples. <laughs> I like that idea. Or on somebody said about to fight, not the nipples. Right, right. <laughs> uh, hey, whatever gets in your way. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of that. I, I can't think of anything better actually. Right. Poi on nipples? Great. <laughs> yes. Sold! Sold! Give that man his poi. Oh. Marine World Chow will close it out. It's time. Pound sign notes roll. Pound sign Matt Rape Train. Pound sign Ingo Sugar Daddy. What is the best and worst purchase you've ever made? Best purchase I ever made? Oh, I have something horrible to say. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sexual. Huh? It's no. chocolate and flavor. I'll be up. My divorce. That was the most the oh, best purchase snap. I ever made. That's super expensive. I want to take a pass. Every penny it was worth it. Every penny it was worth it. The worst purchase I ever made. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm gonna leave that one alone. It's related to that divorce, though. <laughs> but I think oh, I think the best purchase was an infrared sauna. I use that motherfucker oh, yeah. so often, at least five times a week, and ever since day one I, I bought it in their fucking exactly. single man sauna. They get sweating, 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 making it happen. Worst purchase, it's probably just when my vehicle breaks down or it gives me an error code like I just did recently. It's like, blah, 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 it's wrong. And I buy all these parts and then the error code goes off and now I have all these parts and I'm past my return window. I'm like, oh, God damn it. Just put those in the closet. So I can probably time. resell them. I could, but I just keep them because what if they fucking this thing happened twice? Like I had this one error code happen, mm -hmm. bought all the shit, error code went off, it returned knows. all the shit, and the error code came back on, bought all the shit again to do the repair, error code went off. Like I was gonna put that over there for now, a hundred bucks worth the shit, smart man. And a cell phone falls into both of those categories, a smartphone. Because I remember the days of the flip phone and I was so happy. Everybody else had their goddamn iPhones. I was like, fuck all you guys, I don't know what you're talking about. And I got my hands on a smartphone and I was like way behind everybody else. And I should have been way ahead of everybody else. Mobile porn. <laughs> Holy shit. Life changing. Yes. Camera phone. What fictional character would be the most boring to meet in real life? Fictional character? Yeah. Something like movie person. Any That's character a in a movie. Weird question. Probably Spider-Man. Yeah, he was on my list. <laughs> He's so... I don't like Spider-Man. Uh, not a fan. I was going to say Napoleon Dynamite. I don't get that movie. I thought it was hilarious. Really? Yeah, I tried again. I cannot get it. Mm. I don't know. If you had to change your name, what would your new name be, and why would you choose that name? My new name. I'd go with Nancy McFuckstick, so you don't know if I'm coming or going. Nice. My name would just be Julio. <laughs> yeah? Why? <laughs> I don't know, because it sounds You like cool. Julio? <laughs> I kind of do. You should go with one name, just Julio. <laughs> That's it. Just and you got to do that like hand gesture when Julio. you say it. Julio. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it, it always had a, a cool ring to it. I don't know. Right, cool. I could wear a sombrero. Good for you. Fuck, Mary kill. Celebrity edition number 13. I hope you hooked us up to Celebrities sign. over 50. Oh, boy. It's in the wheelhouse. That's not what I meant, sir. No, he is. Marissa Tomei. Oh, dude, I was just talking about Marissa Tomei. She I had, did look terrible in Spider-Man. I had a thing for her for a long time when I was younger. Um, I'm taking that. What the hell is that other movie she was in? She was in The Wrestler. And that's where she was doing a tripping. Oh, yeah. I like her. Uh, Juicy? Always have. Uh, Mary Louise Parker, Weeds. Weeds. She's not bad. She's yeah. got like that mom bod thing going on. So spread, sir. Uh -huh. And then Nicole Kidman. I was Age never, is on her. It's never that into her. Age is on her. I'm going to have to kill her. Sorry. I agree. Not into that. Age is on oh, her. This is a tough call yep. between these two. Yep. Really tough. 
I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to marry Mary Louise Parker strictly because of the weeds thing. I'm guessing she's got a lot of connections. We're gonna go with that role. We're gonna fuck Marissa Tomei. Are we in agreement? Uh, we're in agreement on this <laughs> okay. one actually because you know why Marissa Tomei is way too skinny now. When you saw her in Spider Man, I was like, ooh, that's yeah. looking a little bit gross to me. I like thick. Mary Louise Parker's got yes. a little thick. Sure. Thing. Good. Plus, she's a drug dealer. Yeah, one. she'll hook you up. Got to knowledge. Nothing to this week. We gotta go back to the phone. We got another phone, phone friend. friend. Nice. Got to uh, hook in another video. A lot of video this week. Mm -hmm. oh, that's Matt with his go. giant icons on his iPhone. His icons are so big. There's like two rows. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey. So I'll give you. I know we talked about the human punching bag a couple weeks ago. Where uh, some person was teeing off, but oh, here's the human punching bag part two. Oh, I like the booty. That's a nice. And booty. then she'll finish it off with a nice kick. Ooh, that's solid. It's a solid ass. But it doesn't even bounce. That's the crazy thing. Because you think about like a a non-taut ass when it gets punched, it's like blah 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 blah. That thing is so solid. There's no blah blah blah. Yeah, some girls have these. Just very firm ass, like you smack it and it's yeah. just like hitting the side of a wall. And, and then another like, one's like a goddamn waterbed. Yeah, exactly. What's that about? I don't know. I'm not Too sure fitty. Which, I'm not sure which one I like better. I think the firm ass is quite nice. I can go either way. Yeah. So I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of things and bodies yes. and curves. Variety is always good. Yes. Right. So, what do they call it? The spice of life? Yes, thank you. See? Well, Sometimes my like brain works. Pepper? pepper? Mm -hmm. Spice of life. Yes. Okay. That's it. Shit down. That has been this week's edition of Nuts. My name's Ingo Wiggle. Oh no, that's talking crazy shit over there. Cardful. Yeah. Matt Ruth, thanks for playing. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out later. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs>